900 shooting days, Antarctica, you heard that, and you thought, how did I get the short straw? <laughs> Fortunately, I, I stand on the shoulders of 23 amazing cinematographers. Uh, and from the NSA, we were able to get 23 what they call beds, which is places to stay in Antarctica. So I, I was in the wilds of Burbank during the, the shooting. Wait, days. you never had to put on the gear and go down? I never had to go. I had my two directors down there, Jeff Wilson and Alistair Fothergill, and then some of the greatest um, nature photographers in the world. They're just amazing. So was this all in place when you were brought on board? or? Uh, yeah, we partner with a wonderful company, a Silverback Productions, and uh, Alistair and Jeff both worked on Frozen Planet. They were in love with these little creatures. You know, we, we like to say that the Adelia is half the size of a, an emperor with twice the personality. And they, they just adored this story, and they knew, they wanted to tell, a, you know, we, the, the trope in these oftentimes is the mother cub, mother chick, and in this particular case, uh, we could tell a father story. And it was something that really got them excited. And uh, Now, was this an open casting call? How did you find Steve? Steve, you know, uh, many people ask about Steve. Steve uh, his agent is amazing. Um, Steve actually was one penguin. And he had a lot of stunt doubles. Um, the uh, the penguin in the nest, you know, the fact that they are always in the same nest, we were able to follow that one penguin who just had so much personality. Jeff Wilson, that was in uh, Cape Crozier, which is near McMurdo Station. It is the windiest place on Earth. Um, and interestingly, one of the driest places on Earth. Hmm. Um, th and so th uh, he found Steve and fell in love with him because he was such a you know, a specific little personality. And each, you know, the interesting thing about these animals is they all have a personality. And so you, you know, some of them you can approach, many of them will approach you, but some will, you know, fight back, some will run away, some will come up and just kind of sit in, you know, sit down with you. And Steve hit you up for money or hit All the time. <laughs> all the time. But because... I, I wondered if that didn't have to happen because there were junctures, which were clearly dramatic moments. You think, is Steve going to make it? Yeah. yeah, well, you know, essentially survival is what this story is about. Survival and being a good dad, I think, is the two things. Uh, you know, d definitely how we craft these stories is essentially our cinematographers are out in the field and they're really, uh, you know, journaling all the behavior. So the behavior that you're seeing is all behavior that that we're capturing uh, and then you know unlike I, my my day job is in animation where we start everything from whole cloth in this particular sense we get images with lots of kind of uh, you know these guys out in the field are you know behavioral scientists biologists you know they they're just phenomenal and then we're able to then thread that story uh, using the images that they bring to us. Because in physics, there's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that the observer changes the thing observed. That must be the concern in documentary films, too. Well, definitely, in this case, you know, it's, it's interesting, because if you're shooting big cats, like in, uh, you know, the snow leopards in Born in China, or the, uh, on the Serengeti when you're doing um, uh, lions and whatnot, you don't get close to them, uh, but they're aware that you're there. Uh, uh, there are certain animals like the penguin, like monkeys, who, if you're there, they will interact with you. So one of the things, you know, for instance, on we, we were in five different locations on Antarctica. Cape Crozier, we actually uh, hiked about 40 minutes away from the camp, from, from the nesting area, because we didn't want them to get used to us. And, um, but as you see, even, I love these films at the end when you get to see a little bit of the making of, they will, they will come up with you uh, regardless. We were really careful, everything that you see in the nesting area was done with long, you know, with photo, uh, um, you know, tele telephoto lenses, because if you get in there, uh, and distract the penguins, the skewers are uh, a big threat. And so you, you know, we stayed away from that, but anything outside that range, they would walk right by and 
And you had biologists on site who were letting you know what was happening that yeah, absolutely. was supposed to be well, happening. Well, the, the, you know, my, my two directors both have PhDs in uh, animal behavior. And Don't we all? Exactly. <laughs> no, because this is such a, uh, is, is pitched to such a young audience too, and it's not like a nature documentary of the old days where the, the narrator hid in the bushes and said, what you're seeing now among the blue-throated grief. The this Marlon Perkins approach. This is the, Mar the Marlon Perkins approach. Um, but th the voice of Steve, the narration, the character of Steve was also that tone. It wasn't like, I'm going off to breed now. I'm going off to start a family. So the language was very G-rated. Was It was constructed everything with, with that kind of young audience in mind. No? Well, it's interesting because this particular piece, I don't, you know, the I've, this is my third uh, Disney Nature film, and it is definitely the one that we felt we could actually invest most in the comedy and in the character and actually... We try and stay away from actually having characters speak in these things, but it was such uh, kind of a, a, it just felt right to do that. Um, and they're so damn adorable, <laughs> just amazing. And you can see their thought process, which is another thing that just is, is phenomenal with them. So, you know, th on this particular one, we were, you know, we looked at Steve as kind of the every penguin. And so we were very lucky to get Ed Helms, who uh, we think of as kind of the every man. And uh, my director, uh, Jeff Wilson, was, uh, he's a millennial dad, uh, hence the soundscape, that, or the, rather the, the musical uh, uh, pieces in there. It's, it's Jeff, it's, it's what his three-year-old, his five-year-old, and his seven-year-old hear in the back of the van when they, he's taking them places. Uh, so yeah, it's it, it. You know, we really felt on this one we could kind of go out on a limb a little bit and push it a little further. And did having Ed Helms also change or shape the character? Absolutely. I mean, I think Ed Helms when he came. The great thing about Ed, and you know, I've done a lot of voiceover in the tw twenty six years that I've been with Disney. Um, he came in so prepared, with so many questions, and he was so in love with this character. Uh, and you know, obviously, we recorded the script, and we went through the 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 entire film, and then we would go back to sections and just let him riff. Um, certainly, all this stuff when he's running up onto the shore and falling over and whatnot, it's all timed to him just watching the, the film and going. He's he's just a delightful delightful human being. Roy Conley, thanks for being so generous with your time here. It is it's my pleasure. It is Thank absolutely you. my Thank pleasure.